infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. This is for all you medical laboratory scientists listening today. And I am joined by Texas State University professor and clinical laboratory science program chair, Dr. Rodney Rohde. And we're going to talk about a relatively new advanced education degree um, for clinical laboratory professionals. It's called the Doctorate in Clinical Laboratory Science, or the DCLS. Dr. Rohde, uh, can you talk about this program and what's its purpose? Sure. I am very excited to talk about this program, Robert. As you know, um, our profession really is still at the bachelor's degree level, clinical laboratory science. It's also kind of transitioning to the term medical laboratory science around the country. And there's also some master's degrees that kind of help you specialize in certain areas and so forth. What the DCLS is, it's really targeting uh, the use of what is kind of circulating around the country now termed diagnostic management teams, DMTs. And really a, a good way to think about this is it's really along the lines of other professional doctorates, kind of like the PharmD, the pharmacy, the doctor of pharmacy, and even the DPT, like a doctorate of physical therapy. And basically, we want doctorally prepared medical laboratory scientists to be working with pathologists and other healthcare members in the diagnosis and treatments of patients. So we know we are trained um, in translational research um, with respect to this DCLS, but we don't really have the same in-depth research training that, say, a PhD has like I have. So there is a little bit of difference, and we'll talk about that here and there. And just to kind of kick off um, the difference in that is that, say you were very interested and wanted to focus on academics or research, like, you know, to be a professor, then a PhD is probably the primary degree. But if you're looking at you know, kind of this new interesting area of focusing on consultations with physicians and patients and even other healthcare professionals, then the DCLS is really the better degree. It's more of a clinical doctorate, and it's not intended to replace the, the MD, the pathologist, but to work together to synergistically kind of fill that communication and knowledge gap that we think exists. We know it exists between physicians and the medical laboratory. So we're really excited about it at the national level. So it would be comparable to, say, the DRPH yes. in, in public health as opposed to a PhD in, a, in a epidemiology or something. That's correct. Yeah. Um, Dr. Rohde, how many programs are there across the country that offer this? You bet. Right now, currently there are three programs. We have one in Rutgers. We have one here in my home state in Texas at UTMB Galveston. University of Texas Medical Branch, Galveston. And the, the newest, the most recent one, is the Kansas University Medical Center just started. They're actually taking applications in the fall of 2019 for their first class. So those are the big three right now. So that's kind of nice. you got one on the East Coast, you know, a couple more in the, the middle. And there are some others in the pipeline, and I really don't know the status of some of those in the pipeline, but our hopes is to kind of have a few others spread out throughout the country. Okay. Well, you, you discussed the purpose quite a bit, so I wonder if you could elaborate a little bit more on the objectives of the DCLS. Sure. So a, kind of a repeat to start off, there's, there's really, you know, obviously amazing pathologists out there, and they're working really hard to, to kind of close gaps in the area of not only medical laboratory ordering, but also interpretation. So those are kind of few. We've we've really found a few champions in the pathology world that that understand that. So we're constantly educating that with respect to the DCLS objectives and really the workload of the pathologist. Um, so part of our goal is to help help 
reduce that because what's going on is the pathologist workload is really prohibiting spending any kind of significant time on performing major consultations. I mean, if anybody uh, has been to the doctor lately, um, you know that it's very difficult to get any in-depth time kind of discussing um, diagnostics or interpretation of results and so things like that. So we're really hoping the DCS, DCLS will help that, uh, will improve test utilization uh, by different methods and really working on kind of interdisciplinary projects to help improve the laboratory service delivery, you know, patient safety and patient care. So. Um, when you look at some of the other articles I've written about our profession, you'll, you might remember me talking about literally thousands. I mean, Robert, there are thousands of medical laboratory tests, especially in the age of molecular mm -hmm. testing and, and even antigenic specialization. So it's really difficult, you know, to understand which tests to order and then which tests to interpret, you know, how to interpret them, what means... Uh, what and what's priority. And so we think, you know, without hurting any scope of practice, that we can do that for a living. We think we already do that really better than anyone. We just want to take that DCLS and try to become a very valuable member of the healthcare team. And I'm excited about it because, you know, it helps awareness. You know, it helps us get out of that laboratory and round with physicians and, and pharmacists and nurses and and really provide the best health care for the patient. Um, Dr. Rohde, do you, do you know anyone that's um, graduated with this degree? I do, Robert. I'm, I'm excited to tell you that at our national meeting this summer in Chicago, at the ASCLS meeting, um, we learned that a young lady, Dr. Brandy Gonzalez, is the first in the nation uh, Brandy is Dr. Dr. Brandy Gonzalez is the director of laboratory operations at Claiborne Memorial Medical Center at Augusta University Medical Center. And a little bit about her, she has her bachelor's in CLS and her master's in CLS. So, if you're interested in a DCLS, one thing I should point out is that they're not going to take a brand new bachelor's degree person. What they want is someone that's worked in the trenches of the medical lab for at least if my understanding is still the same, five years, that may be dependent on the university, but I believe their target is five years, and she received hers from Rutgers. So this, this amazing lady was literally doing some commuting. She relocated to make this happen for herself, and so she's become a good friend and a colleague, and I, I actually I called her this, and I kind of embarrassed her, but I think she's a pioneer in laboratory medicine because... <laughs> She's the first, and and she's writing some papers, and I can't wait till she publishes them because she has shown in her in her experiences. So they do a it's a three year program, and in the latter part of that, you do a full on practicum. You round. You're part of a diagnostic management team. You're in the trenches doing this, much like a physician would in their internship. And um, she showed a huge cost savings to hospitals um, due to uh, medical interpretation and, and ordering of tests, as well as really saving some lives by, you know, challenging the status quo. So I'm just really excited about it. You know, it's, it's, it's really exciting to see an opportunity for our field to kind of move out and, and really expand how people see us in our role to save other other lives based on medical laboratory medicine. Yeah, just, let me just try to cl clear up a couple things for listeners, uh, particularly uh, CLS listeners. Um, this is a this is not a research focused degree like a PhD. That's correct. And you also, and you also mentioned that it's part of this diagnostic team. This individual is not consulting with the patient is consulting with the physicians treating the patient? You're absolutely right. That is a very yeah. good point. Um, you know, and, and one of the first questions we get uh, from a variety of people, including universities, so academic questions are, you know, what's, what's the deal with this DCLS over other medical or scientific kind of doctoral degrees? I, I and I think many of my colleagues 
uh, would would say there really isn't an advantage over the others. It's just a focus. So the DCLS is a clinical doctorate with a focus in laboratory diagnostics consultation, and it's the consult is at the level of other professional healthcare members, like you mentioned, physicians and pharmacists and things like that. It, it of course, means that you you know, with that kind of background, you might find down the road, not right now, but you might find an opportunity to be a consultant uh, where you're doing patient consults. But right now, it's at the level of the physicians and the others in the room that are experts in patient care. Very interesting. I, I'm sure there's a plenty of uh, medical laboratory people that are listening that would be very interested. Oh, in man, they really are, especially the new generations, obviously, you know, but yeah. and Brandy's not a brand new generation. She's she's a she's a seasoned veteran, but she's kind of in that mid level of her career. So we're mm-hmm. really excited because she's really well rounded and doing a wonderful job. She's a great trailblazer. But I know, you know, more are coming there. There's already, you know, some that are finishing off that third year. So we're going to be seeing more kind of introduced um, around the country. Okay. Um, Dr. Rohde, let me give you uh, a minute or two to any final thoughts on this topic. Not really. um, Not any major thoughts. We've kind of covered them all. I I do hope our listeners uh, that you take some time to check out the links and the other resources that Robert is going to post on this story because each of those universities have a ton of information. Um, our professional organization, the American Society for Clinical Laboratory Science, has a resource toolkit, um, and all of those will help answer you the the kind of in the trenches type of information about you know what do I need to do, what kind of coursework do I need to have to get there, how many do they accept, you know, do I have to move? So all of that's kind of in the in the weeds, but certainly um, it's up and going. So we are hoping, uh, if you're interested in these kind of more patient-oriented um, degree where you're working with physicians to to make medical diagnostics kind of a different different focus for you instead of sitting at the bench all the time, then we welcome you looking at this degree. Excellent. And as Dr. Rohde said, I will put up the links of the different schools that offer it so you can research it for yourself. And I want to thank you once again, Dr. Rodney Rohde, for joining me on this very interesting topic for medical laboratory scientists. Thanks so much, Robert. I had a great time. All right, you bet.